Well, pronunciation is a big issue for a couple of reasons. One, it has an impact on how people view you, how seriously they take you. Uh, if you pronounce their language poorly, um, they may rightly or wrongly uh, generalize and assume that you don't have a lot of knowledge in general to share with them. Uh, uh, secondly, outside of the issue of respect, uh, there's the issue of comprehension. My wife, uh, when she received her nurse's training uh, many years ago at M MSU also, she told me that uh, there were many times she had international instructors whose pronunciation was such that it was very hard to follow their lectures. You may have had that experience yourself. And so simply for the issue of comprehension, pronunciation is, is extremely important. Um, and as far as uh, the Spanish language is concerned, and for those of us who are English, native English speakers, the greatest problem, I just said speakers, <laughs> I must be German. The, the greatest problem that we, uh, we face is uh, how we pronounce vowels in Spanish. Um, uh, the vowel sounds in Spanish, by the way, are a, e, e, o, u. And the way in which I'm pronouncing them, I pronounce those five vowels right there, should already suggest to you something about what I'm going to say, is that when you speak, uh, when we speak in English, and we pronounce a certain vowel sound, we create what's called a diphthong. A diphthong is really when you take have two vowel sounds and pronounce them side by side, like uh, May, the month of May. Notice how my mouth is changing shape, A, or I mow the lawn. Well, there's only one vowel, but we say the sound O in English as though it were a diphthong. We say O. Oh. We change the shape of our mouth as we say one single vowel sound, Mo. This is the greatest downfall we have as English-speaking people. <laughs> I said that again. <laughs> English-speaking people as we try to... Uh, uh, try to speak Spanish is that we create diphthongs where they should not exist. We change the shape of our mouth, we elongate the sound of the vowel, and we change the shape of our mouth as we're pronouncing a single vowel sound in Spanish. I'll, I'll give you an example in English first of how we uh, uh, how we create these what I call diphthongs. Uh, you the word the sentence you know the lady. You, if you slow it down, when we say you, we say you, ooh. Our, mou our mouth changes shape as we sound, say the sound ooh. Now in English, you has two vowels, so that might seem like a natural thing to do. But in Spanish, as you say the sound ooh, you don't say uh, ooh, you say ooh. Now watch, my jaw, my mouth, my lips, my teeth, my tongue, nothing moves. Everything is static as I make the sound ooh, like mujer, like for the word woman, mujer. It's Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's not ooh. Okay? Uh, uh, so, you, no, the word no, you know the lady. No. When we say no, the letter O, a single vowel uh, in English, we say O. Oh. We change the shape of our mouth as we're pronouncing that single vowel sound. In Spanish, that's an absolute, uh, it's absolutely forbidden to do something of that nature. Um, and when we pronounce Spanish in that fashion, that's what makes us sound like a gringo. A gringo, not a gringo. Um, um, so uh, no, we we cr create we change the shape of our mouth as we're pronouncing that vowel sound. The lady, the word lady, lady, lay. So slow it down, lay, a. I'm changing the shape of my mouth as I say, say that one single vo uh, letter vowel in English, the letter a, and the word lady, a, a. And uh, consequently, when we sp speak Spanish, uh, because of this propensity we have to change the shape of our mouth in the midst of a vowel sound. We will, we sound like this. Uh, I'll say that one variation of the way in which you can say my name is Steve. Uh, uh, mi nombre es Esteban. As I said, mi nombre es Esteban. I said, uh, well, the, the the me, even the e, the sound e, 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 e in Spanish can be corrupted. And we could say e, e. See, I'm changing the shape of my mouth as I say it. Uh, um, and then nombre, that's grotesque. Nombre, oh, I'm saying oh like in English, no. And when I say the, the e sound in, in, in the end of bre, um, uh, mi nombre, e, I'm saying e, mi nombre. That's what makes us sound um, horrific to a Spanish speaking person. That's what makes us, what tips off the fact that we're English speaking people, as it would change the shape of our mouth as we say a single vowel sound. Es, mi nombre es, es, esteban. It should sound like, mi nombre es Esteban. What I'm doing in each of these cases, this is the general principle you need, to, you need to pull from this about pronunciation. The most important single thing you can correct as far as your Spanish pronunciation is chop the vowel sounds short, and secondly, 
uh, maintain the purity of the vowel sound. That is to say, it's like setting your jaw and all the other parts of your mouth that pronounce the speech in concrete as you start the vowel sound. Uh, 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 for example, uh, nombre. No, nombre. When I say the sound, oh, no, oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> nothing's moving, is it? And when I say bre, eh, 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 mi nombre, eh, um, uh, I, I don't say a. Eh, nothing moves. It's a eh, nombre, a. Eh, okay. Mi nombre es Esteban. My mouth is moving because I'm I have to pronounce the consonants, but the vowels are pronounced in a pure fashion without any movement whatsoever in the um, different parts of my mouth that, that create the sound. So let me just let you hear an, a description of my life a little bit. Pronounce as an American and then pronounce as a Spanish-speaking person. Um, this is the first. Uh, I think you can probably tell which which pronunciation is the correct one. Me uh, llamo Steve Nesbitt, vivo en una casa con mi familia en el campo cerca de la capital de Michigan. Uh, estoy casado, tengo nueve hijos, mis esposa y yo tenemos nueve hijos. Uh, trabajo, ahora no trabajo en escuelas, pero antes yo trabajaba en escuelas, uh, escuela, en escuelas preparatorias. Yo enseñaba el español y el, el francés. Okay, now that was grotesque. It should sound more like, uh, me llamo Steve Nesby, tengo 62 años, vivo en el campo, en, en una casa con mi familia, en los Estados Unidos, cerca de la capital de Lansing, Michigan. Uh, bueno, mi esposa y yo tenemos nueve hijos. Uh, ¿Y qué más puedo decirles? The significant difference in all of the, uh, the, those two pronunciations it was the fact that I was with my vowel sounds, I was chop, chopping the vowel sounds short, and once I start to make the sound, I don't in any way change the shape of my mouth. Okay, so let's um, uh, let's try some practice of, uh, with this principle here. We'll take some very short words uh, to begin with here. The first is probably the most commonly mispronounced sound in Spanish is the sound a a. Well, it's not that's not the Spanish. That's why we, we mispronounce it. The sound is a a. It's the letter e. Which is pronounced e. Eh. All right. Just re repeat after me, me. Okay. What you? I, I want to mention a couple things to you. One, me, e, eh, e. Eh. I'm pushing the sound upward in my mouth and pronouncing the e eh sound more in my nasal cavities than we do in English. Okay. That's one thought. And one, how do you push the sound upward in your mouth? You smile a little bit when you speak, me, e. Eh. Your voice will be a little bit more nasal than it typically probably is when you speak English. Uh, uh, but the more important point I want to get across is that I'm cutting the vowel sound short, and once I begin it, nothing moves. Me, e, me. Repeat them, por favor. Me. Uh huh. We we'll keep on going. Te. Uh huh. Se. Le. Now here's an interesting word. This is the word to read. Le. Um, uh, is that our, our tendency as English-speaking people would be to say le, 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 le. le. Uh, uh, but once I start the sound e. Eh, all I'm going to do is, I'm not going to move the shape of my mouth here, two letter, two E's, both of them I have to pronounce, which is an important issue, by the way, is that you want to make sure you pronounce all letters in Spanish with the exception of certain exceptions I'll mention later on. Uh, and so generally speaking, this is this is going to be, uh, you're going to pronounce every letter. And so this is going to be le, e, e, e. All I did between the e and the e was they cut off the, the my breath. I caused there to be a pause between the two words, but I didn't do anything as far as my, the shape of my mouth, the position of my mouth, my teeth, teeth my lips, whatever. Uh, I maintain them in the same form. Le, le. Okay, and then let's take the, the name last of all. Pepe. Pepe. Uh, muy bien. Okay, está bien. Let's go on to the next vowel. Uh, the, the vowel um, O. In English, that's the sound O. In Spanish, it's O. Nothing moves. O, O. Lo. Uh -huh. No. Yo. That's an extremely common to use word, is it not? If you know Spanish, you're going to be saying yo all the time. And if you say yo, that would be grotesque. And so it's yo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The o. Oh. Your mouth doesn't move. The, the shape of the mouth doesn't... The, you, you don't close your mouth as you're saying the o oh sound. Uh, here's the word for boat. One, one word for boat. Bote. Repitan. Bote. Okay. Pero. Pero. This is an interesting word because we, we have the two different vowel sounds here we, we've been talking about. First of all, the E. Nothing changes in the shape of my mouth as I start to say it. Pe. Notice how short I'm chopping it. I'm not saying pe. Pero. Okay, but pe. Pero. E. O. 
Okay. Uh, next one, the, the sound oo, uh, like in June in English, or moon. That's what we want to avoid. We don't want to change the shape of our mouth going from, from oo to oo. Okay. And so, not tu, tu hablas espanol, but tu, o, o, tu, repeat it, tu. Uh -huh. Duro. We're not talking about the R at this point. We will talk about the R a little later, how it's pronounced, but uh, in any case, it's duro. Okay. Cubo. Also, the B, we'll talk about that as well. It's not cubo, but rather cubo. And we'll, we'll talk about that in, this, in a little bit here. Repitan. Agudo. Agudo. Okay. And agu, u, u, u. I'm not saying agu. And I'm not saying do. I'm chopping the sound short and maintaining this, the, the purity of the sound. Agudo. Agudo. We mean, por fin, luto, which means morning, to be in morning. Uh, 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 luto. Lu, u, 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 luto. And the o, of course, is chopped short. It's o, not o. Okay, here's some medical examples now taken from, probably taken from your uh, intake form, but it could be, in fact, these all come from the very beginning of the intake form as I look at them. Uh, uh, please repeat them after me. Nombre. Nombre. Let me say all four of them first, as though I were an English-speaking person, so you get a sense of how horrific it sounds when we don't maintain the purity of the vowel sounds and we, when we elongate them. Nombre. Uh, Senora, por favor, dígame, ¿cuál es su nombre? Ma'am, would you please tell me what your name is? ¿Cuál es su nombre? Nombre. Apellido. Fecha de nacimiento. Comunidad. Okay, that is not the way you want to pronounce, but uh, sadly enough, there are reasons for this. This has to, has to do with how languages are taught in the United States. Unfortunately, very high emphasis upon the written word from the very first day of classes, exercises, grammatical packets, things like that. It's an enormous mistake. Languages should be taught first. I, I, in the classroom, I would spend an entire year before I would allow my students to see the printed word. It was all oral uh, expression, but that's another topic for another time. Okay, so that's what we want to avoid is that kind of grotesque pronunciation. All right, uh, repeat that. Nombre. Okay, we're, we're chopping the O, o sound short to O and E. Nombre. Nombre. And you can hear the nasal sound quality in my voice as I'm pushing the sound upward in my face. Nombre. I'm not saying nombre with more of the pronunciation here in, in, in my throat. Um, ap apellido. Apellido. Okay, apellido. Muy bien. Yeah, we have the E sound again, not A, and the, the, and the O, not O. Uh, fecha. That wasn't very well done on my part. Let's try again. Fecha. There you go, E. Fecha. And now, de. De. Uh -huh. again, the de is, is worth talking about. The D is worth talking about, but we'll get to that in a little bit here. Nacimiento. Nacimiento. Now, this word, nacimiento, which is part of your intake form that you'll be working with, um, there's some important things to say about it. Uh, there's a, a very important principle is that when you have vowels side by side in Spanish, vowels, no matter wh wh what is next to them, no matter if they're at the beginning of a word, at the end of the word, in the middle of the word, next to another vowel sound, after that vowel sound, that you respect the value of the vowel. The five vowel sounds are a, e, i, o, u, and those vowel sounds never change, unlike in English, as you know very well. Uh, let's take um, a, apple. Um, the letter a, a, a is, is a, uh, or excuse me, the letter um, a in apple is pronounced a. Then let's put it in the word late, late. And now the letter a has the value of a. So it goes from a to a, and you can come up with many other such examples. Uh, uh, that does not happen in Spanish. The, the value, it's very easy to spell, therefore. It's a very easy language to spell and to read. Uh, uh, the value of the vowel never changes no matter where it's located in the word, no matter what is next to it. And so, why, do, why, why am I saying that? We as Americans, when we say, for example, M-I-E-N-T-O at the end of nacimiento, uh, we want to change the, the letter E before an N to the sound E. Eh. It's extremely common. I, I, I can, are you sick? Está, está enfermo? Está enfermo is what we would sound like. And it's, it's, the letter E is pronounced E, no matter where it is, no matter what's next to it, E. So in enfermo, en it's not en fermo, it's E, en, E, E, enfermo, enfermo. Okay? 
And so in the word uh, nacimiento, in the word miento, which is in essence like the word, uh, the, the, uh, the suffix M-E-N-T in English, we want to say ment, eh, and we change it, we make this out, letter E pronounced eh in English. In Spanish, E is E is E is E. It never changes its value. And so don't let yourself slip into na uh, nacimiento. It's nacimiento. It's always E. Nacimiento. El nacimiento. Fecha de nacimiento. Okay, después, uh, comunidad. Repitan. Comunidad. Comunidad. O, U, I. And A. Okay, four vowel sounds here. The first, it's O. It's not O. Co. Mu, not U, Komu, Ni, and then Dad. We'll talk about the D in just a second here. We're getting around to it. Comunidad. Okay, está bien. Now, in, the vowels are the biggest issue. If you can master the vowels, if you can uh, maintain the purity of the sound and chop the vowel sound short, not elongating it, elongating it and creating a diphthong, you'll be way ahead. You'll already uh, sound uh, far more authentic than the average English-speaking person trying to speak Spanish, okay? But there are also issues with uh, consonants. The vowels are the key, but consonants, certain ones do, deserve to be pointed out. Uh, I'll, I'll put, spend a little bit more time with the most important ones, and I'll just mention some other changes from the vowel sounds as we pronounce them in English. Or the, I'm sorry, the consonant sounds as we pronounce them in English. First of all, of course, the R and the double R. That's one of the things we notice, first of all, about Spanish, is the rolling of, of the R. When in the midst of a word, a single R is, is, is uh, used, uh, for example, the word for, well, let's take uh, the, uh, expensive, caro. Um, I, I, what I do is the tip of my tongue hits the roof of my mouth right behind my teeth just one time. With a single R in the midst of a word, the end of the word, in the middle of the word, uh, my, the tip of my tongue hits the roof of my mouth uh, right behind my teeth. Caro, caro. Okay, the key in, in, in that is to get the R out of your throat. It's, um, we would say caro, okay? We'd say the R down here in our throat, caro. Uh, and we want caro. It's, it, you take it out of your throat, the R sound, you push it to the front of your mouth, caro, caro. Okay, it's almost, if you're saying the letter D, I'll change the R to a D, um, in English D, caro. I'm far closer to pronouncing the R correctly saying C-A-D-O, caro, than I am when I say Caro, with the R down here. I'm far closer. Now, it's not what we want. We don't want to say cad with my teeth coming together to pronounce a, a D sound. We want to make the tip of my tongue hit the roof of my mouth right behind my teeth. Caro, caro, okay? But we're still far closer there than if we get the R down in our throat. That's the worst thing you can do as far as the R is pronounced, is pronounce it in your throat. Now, there's also the... I said that the R in the midst of a word, at the end of a word, is pronounced D. A single uh, uh, striking of the tip of your tongue against the roof of your mouth right behind your teeth. But a single R at the beginning of a word has the value of the double R. You may already know that the double R is where you roll the sound. Rrr, like a little boy playing with a truck on the, on the ground. Um, uh, uh, and so, for example, this word caro, I'm going to transform it now to the word for, instead of expensive, the word car, which is with a double R, carro. Carro. What am I doing now? I'm fluttering the tip of my tongue three, four, five times uh, 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 against the roof of my mouth. Carro. It's no longer right behind my teeth. It's a little farther back. And I'm fluttering it against the roof of my mouth three, four, five times. Carro. Okay? Carro. Uh, um, and what I wanted, was saying to you was that the single R has the value of the double R, that is to say the R sound, if it's in the initial position in a word, like the word Robert in Spanish, Roberto, or um, uh, quickly, rápido. There's only a single R in the word rápido, but I'm, uh, I am uh, pronouncing it as though it's a double R because in the initial position, it starts the word. Rápido. Uh, uh, Renate is a person's name. Roberto. Okay. Uh, where am I now? Let's see. Um, uh, and so the, the key with both the R and the double R, get the R out of your throat, get it in the front of your mouth, um, and with the single R, one time against the roof of your mouth, the double R, flutter it against the roof of your mouth. Now, this is a very important point. Uh, um, uh, you're probably saying, something about at least three-fourths of you are saying, I can't roll my R's. I heard students say that to me all the time, I, just, I can't roll my R's. 
That is not true. First of all, like I mentioned, when you were little, maybe you played with cars on the ground, that kind of thing. But secondly, this is a skill that can be learned. It'll t it's like any physical uh, motor skill that has to be mastered. It takes practice. I had a student who um, was very highly motivated, this young woman, and she would sit in the front row of my classes and she wanted to, to be able to roll her R's. And she now is, is majored in Spanish. She's in college right now, majoring in Spanish. Outstanding speaker of the language. Uh, uh, but at that time, point, in middle school, I think it was, she couldn't roll the R. And I would hear her sitting in the front row. And she was this kind of a person. She's a driven individual, um, especially athletically and academically. And, and she, would, she would go, While I was teaching my class, I'd hear this quiet like a kitten a purring in the front row. And she's practicing that sound. It, it, it's something which with work can be mastered. So don't don't give in too easily to say, well, I can't uh, roll my R's. Work at it. Okay. Uh, uh, next, uh, the B and the V. I'm just going to say the, the, most of the rest of these things I'll say pretty quickly because the R is probably along with the vowels the, the biggest downfall for an English speaking person. The B and the V in, in Spanish are pronounced essentially identically. Um, uh, you're, and it's not a, an explosive B sound or a V sound with a B and the V in the word. It's rather your lips will touch quickly and pronounce, whether it's a B, whether it's a V, pronounce the word in the same fashion. So, for example, uh, also from your uh, intake form, uh, uh, embarazada, for the word for pregnant. Uh, uh, it's not M, or not, I'll, I'll, I'll not mispronounce the rest of the word. I'll just mispronounce the B. Uh, embarazada. It's not an explosive B. You want your lips to touch quickly. Embarazada. Emba, ba, ba, ba. And if there, this had been a V, had it been uh, spelled uh, E-M-V-A-R-A-Z-A-D-A, -A -A, I'd say the same thing. Embarazada. Embarazada. I'm just going to touch my lips quickly together. Um, go ahead and repeat, uh, repeat that one after me. It's one of the words you'll have to use as you, as you uh, deal with your intake forms with, with patients. Uh, repeat that. Embarazada. Embarazada. Okay, next. Now here's a word that, actually, this is in your intake form, too. They ask the question, uh, ¿Por qué viene a la clínica? Why do you come to the clinic? And so, viene. Viene. It's very light. The V, the V, excuse me, is pronounced with your lips just quickly touching. Viene. Viene. Okay? And here's another expression. You're going to be asking, uh, uh, hijos vivos, uh, how many living uh, uh, children do you have? Uh, vivos. Not vivos, but vivos. Vivos. And notice, don't start to forget the, the vowel issue. Don't slip into vivos. Okay? It's oh, oh, oh. Cut it short. Your mouth doesn't move once you start saying the o sound. Vivos. Muy bien. Vivos. Después, varones. This is the idea of ma it's the word male. And, and so uh, when you're asking about uh, how many sons do you have, how many daughters do you have, this is one of the, ter the term you use for sons. Varones. You may have in school learned hijos, hijos for sons, but the, the problem with hijos, and it's, it's of course, I, mean, I would say, soy el hijo de Daniel Nesbitt, I'm the son of Daniel Nesbitt, and that's fine. However, the problem with hijos is it also is the generic term for children. It means both your, your sons and your daughters. And so on a form, as you're filling it out, you've got to make the distinction between, when you talk about children, and you use the word hijos, you got to make a distinction between uh, boys and girls uh, when, as the form requests it, and therefore you have to say varones and mujeres. Um, uh, which sounds like, well, it sounds like you're saying for mujeres, women, but the idea is simply females, males and females. So let's go back to the word varones. Notice how quickly my, my lips touch there. Uh, and now this word, I, I didn't see it uh, in, your, in, your, uh, in your form, but you're going to be using it all the time. The word brazo, brazo. This is a brazo, your arm, brazo. It's not brazo, it's brazo. Okay, T let's touch quickly. Now, now why are you going to be using it all the time? I think you're going to be taking... Uh, you're going to be taking uh, blood pressure and a pulse, right? And you're going to ask people to stretch out their arm or give me your, give me your arm. Deme su brazo, por favor. Give me. Deme. Deme. Deme su brazo or uh, estreche, which is to stretch out. Estreche su brazo, por favor. Um, um, so, in, a, in any case, that's an important word. Uh, move on to the next, um, the next uh, consonant that can pronounce, can produce some problems that really reveals if a person is a Spanish-speaking person or gives away the fact they're just a, an English-speaking person is the letter D. D in English we pronounce with our, our teeth together, D, D, like Daniel. In Spanish, what you do is you soften the D sound. Uh, when you come to the D, you, you, your, the tip of your tongue should appear briefly between your teeth. And, and what it, the impact is to soften the sound so it's no longer explosive. Uh, like Daniel in Spanish is Daniel. Dan, the, the, the. You can probably see the tip of my tongue there. 
the Daniel. Daniel. Uh, so here's some words that, that, that use the D and which are, are found in your, um, I think all of them, yep, all of them are found in your uh, uh, intake form. Uh, comunidad. Notice I'm not saying comunidad. It's dad, dad. It's not quite a th. A th sound in English like the. Our, half of our tongue is sticking out of our mouth, but in, it's the tip of your tongue in Spanish. Okay, so don't don't exaggerate it. But comunidad. And as I'm saying, and oh, go ahead and repeat it, comunidad. As I'm saying, comunidad. Uh, each of those vowel sounds. Make sure you remember to respect their value. Chop them short. Don't change the shape of your mouth. It's not comunidad, but go. Go, mu, ni, dad. Comunidad. You'll be asking them, ¿En qué comunidad vive usted? In which, which community do you live? Um, at the very beginning of your form. And then, uh, oh, we'll put it this way. Dando. Dando pecho. You can say dar pecho, which is to breastfeed. But dando pecho, which is actually the form as it appears in your form. It says, uh, the idea is, are, are you currently uh, breastfeeding? And so, dando uh, repeat them. Dando. So notice I'm not saying dando. I'm saying the, the, dando. Dando pecho. Okay, dando pecho means the, the breastfeeding. Um, diabetes. Diabetes. And by the way, dando pecho is significant for me because my wife is a lactation consultant. So, uh, uh, diabetes. Good, diabetes. This is, this is worth pointing out, too. In saying diabetes, probably it's not too difficult, because in English we say diabetes, with two separate vowel sounds. But just notice how we give each of the vowel sounds, as we say diabetes, its value. E is always E is always E, no matter where it's located in the word, and A never changes its value. So we have E, A, D, A, diabetes. And it's not betes, but rather ve tes. It's a great word. It's got a lot in it, doesn't it? you got the I and the A, dia, E, A. Okay. And then soft B, the, diabe, and that's E, not A, diabetes, diabetes, okay. Um, and, and now, here's another pretty good word to, to think about. Uh, in fact, I'll put it on the screen here. You say it for me. Go ahead, say it. Okay, hopefully you 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 tried at least to, to create, a, to roll the, the R, because the R is in the initial position of the word. Even though there's only one R, it's in the first position of the word, and therefore it's r, resultado, resultado. Hopefully you said e, not re. First, you got the r out of your throat. You didn't say r. And then secondly, hopefully you said e, not a. So it's re. And then su, not u, uh, but resu, result, and then resulta, and then the, 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 resultad, and then last of all, the o. It's o, not o. Okay, resultado. If you respect those different things I'm talking about, right now, those principles, uh, especially the issue of the purity of vowel sounds, getting the R out of your throat, the softening of the D, you won't sound like this. Resultado. Uh, 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 ¿Cuál fue el resultado de su hospitalización? What was the result of your hospital, hospital stay? Uh, but rather, uh, resultado. ¿Cuál fue el resultado de su hospitalización? Uh, and then last of all, uh, datos. Datos. Okay, these are um, data. Datos. Datos. Muy bien. Okay, uh, uh, moving on. We're just real quickly now, I'm just going to touch on these rapidly and we'll move past them. Um, G followed by E or I is the sound H, H. And it's the same value as the letter J followed by anything. The letter J followed by anything is H. What you're doing is allowing the air to flow between your tongue and the roof of your mouth. Flow, flow, flow relatively freely, but there's a certain amount of friction, as you can hear. It's not like an like other H in English, there's some friction. So if you want to try and picture it um, uh, naturally, it's like an angry swan. Try and picture an angry swan, the sound that they make. Uh, and, and so, uh, pare, let's try to say the following words. Pareja. Pareja. Okay, this is a word that comes also from your, it means partner, that comes from your intake form. So um, you've got the R, a single R in the midst, hit the roof of your mouth once, para, para, and then E, Eh, eh, don't change the shape of the uh, of your mouth. You just say eh, and then how oh, the air to flow. Pareja, pareja, muy bien. And, and, and then, by the way, the, this word I noticed was mis, misspelled on your intake form. And it's the very last word, I think, on the second second side. It's cirugía, cirugía, uh, which is a word for surgery. Cirugía, okay. The, notice the h, the g followed by e or i is a soft g sound, so cirugía. Uh, and then last one, 
Harare. This is also in your in the medications. I think at the end of the second page, you've got the um, this word is a word for syrup. Syrup. So it's ch 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 harabe. Notice the the, you know, the airflow for ch, and then the v v v the very soft b sound, and then the e e not a harabe. We get next, next after this. H in Spanish is going to be silent. Don't pronounce an H. There's no. <laughs> All right. So it's a uh, uh, this is it comes into play in four words that you find in your um that you find in your intake form. Hepatitis. Repeat an hepatitis. We mean hepatitis, huh? That is no, at the beginning, it's, it's, it's silent, hepatitis. Next, let's just say this one by yourself. This is a good, it's not a final exam quite yet, but try and say this word right here. Okay, first of all, you hopefully started, you hopefully started with os, os, not, there's no H, okay, the H is silent. So os, and you, 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 you maintain the purity of the vowel sound. Os, bi, ta, li, S. The Z in Spanish is pronounced like an S. So, hospitalis sa. Now, this is, a, this is a, a key one here. This suffix right here the, it corresponds to the English T I O N, like action or um, what else? Uh, communication, any shun word. Uh, in Spanish, you will say uh, with a C instead of the T, and the C followed by E or I is a soft S sound, like an S. Uh, this is very, very commonly mispronounced by Americans, so try and focus on this. Action, for example, acción, or communication, comunicación, or uh, 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 in this case, hospitalization, hospitaliza. Oh, I said that wrong. Did you catch a mistake I made? I'll say it again wrong. Hospitaliza. What did I say wrong? Did you notice? I didn't finish the word, but what was my mistake? I said z for the for the z sound, didn't I? It's s s Hospitaliza. Sion. That's going to be hard for you to, to catch, but don't let yourself slip into the English shun, like we say for action, communication. Uh, it's a sion, hospitalization. Okay? Hospitalization. Uh, and then and the next word. Uh, I'll, I'll say it with you. Hijos. Okay? Hijos, silent H. Hermanos. Hermanos, okay, which means siblings. It also has a sense of brothers, but in general. Uh, unless you know specifically that you're speaking about brothers, in, uh, the first time you hear it in a conversation, it means siblings. Hermanos. Okay, hermanos. The H is silent. Move on. Uh, uh, next. Um, uh, the L and the double L. L. A single L is pronounced just like an English L. Double L is Y. And on certain countries, you're going to hear Z. For example, I had a Venezuelan teacher at Michigan State 40-some years ago when I was a student. And uh, uh, when she would say she, she would say Asia. Asia. E double L A. Asia, uh, but more commonly you're going to say Aya, but like a Y, the double L is like a Y. Stick with the Y and that'll be the safest, the Y pronunciation, that'll be the safest thing you can do. Um, there are certain regions where you'll hear a little bit of a, a little friction there, Asia, Asia, with a little bit of a sound, but not quite as dramatic as what I heard from my Venezuelan teacher. Uh, but stick with this, the Y sound, Aya, Aya. Okay, so let's apply that to the four, the three words that follow this. This word comes from your, um, I'll let you try and say these now without me first saying it, pronouncing it for you. Uh, this comes from your uh, uh, intake form. It's the word for deceased. Okay? How would you say this? Yeah. Fallecido. Fallecido. And the U sound. Fallecido. Uh, it's a the sound, not a du. Fallecido. Okay, next. Right, everybody knows this, I think. Ya llama. Uh, like, uh, él se llama. His name is llama. Or me llamo. Yeah. Uh, and here's a, here's a name of a city in pa Panama to which you're going. You're not going to the city, but you're going to the country. Uh, there's a place called Puerto, which means port, and then say the word. Try and pronounce it. Okay, the value in this this word, there's a couple things to point out. Remember the R, hit the roof of your mouth once because it's in the midst of the word. R, R, and then U and A. How are you going to pronounce U and A? Well, in English, U and E next to each other, you probably just say the U. I can't think of any examples right now off the top of my head, but you probably just say, the, like, yeah, D-U-E. Uh, your bill is due. We just say the U. In Spanish, you pronounce every letter except for the ones I've told you, like the H you, you don't pronounce. Uh, uh, you pronounce every vowel and give each vowel its value. And so if it's U, is U, is U. It never changes value. A is A is A. It never changes no matter where it's located, no matter what's next to it. So U, A. Ar, mu, A. And then the Y sound. And then A again. And s, ar, muelles. Ar, muelles. Moving on to the next sound. Um, 
the, the N with a little squiggly line, which we call a tilde in Spanish, is nia, nia, kind of like a child who is taunting another child. Nia, 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 nia. It's a nia sound. So, años, baño, and I didn't, I didn't find others in your intake form, uh, which use the ñ, but those are two pretty well-known words. Uh, and then the G, which when it's followed by a U, uh, a U E or U I, uh, just pronounces, creates a hard G sound, like in dengue. I don't even know what dengue is, but it sounds like some kind of illness that I would not want to contract. It's found on the second page of your intake form. Dengue. So the it's not dengue. It's the U is silent. It, 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 its only purpose is to make it a hard G sound. And in, the same with the a, a, a U after a Q in Spanish, not pronounced. It's just um, um, uh, uh, bronchitis. Bronchitis for bronchitis, I guess. Uh, next, double value. I've already talked about this. Double values always give each value its each vowel its value. Here's some examples for you to pronounce. Try and pronounce the first word up there. <clears throat> we already talked about it once. Okay, hopefully you said nacimiento, I -e, mie, nacimiento. You didn't say nacimiento. You didn't let the, the E slip into E. At the same time, you gave each vowel its value. I -e, nacimiento. Try this one. Pronounce every letter, unless I've told you specifically that it's not pronounced like an H. So pronounce every letter here. Yeah, I mean that literally. Uh, that means the double C, you pronounce each C individually. Now, the C followed by I is a soft C. And so it's infección. 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 Okay? Uh, try this next next one here. You have a variety of vowel sounds here. I think you have four. No, you have three. That's to say three of the five that exist. So, actuales. And when you're saying actual, well, by the way, which doesn't mean actual. That's pretty important. Both in French and in Spanish, the word actual uh, uh, does not mean actual. It means current. Okay? So, when someone says to you, um, uh, medicamentos actuales, that would be my, my current medication. Uh, um, so, actuales. Uh, the key in that word is, is the U and the A. U, 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 A. U, A. U, A. Same quickly. U, A. U, A. U, A. Actuales. And then last of all, try this one right here. Same thing here. We've got a U and an E next to each other. And, and so, frecue, u, e, u, e, u, e, u, e, u, e. Okay, start out slowly. U, e. Are there individual values? Now run them together as you speak faster and faster. U, e, u, e, u, e, u, e, u, e, u, e. That's what you'll end up with. Frecue, frecuencia, frecuencia. Okay, frecuencia. Uh, now... How about the stress in words? Let's take a look at some outrageous words that I, I for the most part, I have no idea what they mean. You do. Um, oh, but I guess I've seen a couple of them in English that look very similar. I guess it's only a couple. Uh, but uh, how do we pronounce these words? You may have noticed that Spanish is not pronounced in a monotone fashion like we do in English. Our voice rises and falls. On cer certain syllables, we see the stress of our voice. We emphasize them, and our voice rises a little bit. For example, my name, Esteban. As I say, the three syllables of E, Ste, and Van, okay, one of these three, I, I, I'm raising my voice to a higher pitch, and I'm also emphasizing it more. Try and pick out, is it the first, the second, or the third syllable? Esteban. Esteban. Ta, 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 is what it sounds like. Ta, ta, ta. Ta, ta, ta. It's the second syllable. Okay, so in, in English, I would say Stephen. Stephen, it just... It's just flat. There's there's no distinction from the first syllable to the second as far as stress of my voice. But in Spanish, you've got to um, emphasize the right syllable. If you fail to do that, you can actually change the meaning of a word. Here's the general rule. If a word ends in a vowel, N or S, A, E, I, O, U, N or S, one of those seven letters, stress falls on the next to last syllable as you pronounce a word. Okay? And if not a vowel, N or S, A, E, I, O, U, N, S, the word, the stress falls on the last syllable. So let's go on to the next one here. Uh, I, I recognize this because of French. La grippe is the, the flu. So I assume this has something to do with getting rid of the flu. Uh, maybe. <laughs> in any case, antigripal. Antigripal, antigripal. My, my voice rises on the last syllable because the word does not end in N, S, or any vowel. 
Therefore, the stress is on the last syllable, antergipal. Now, let's, let me show you. Well, actually, let's have you try and read three words. This one right here, uh, uh, which you see up here, excuse me. Uh, how would you pronounce that? Okay. It, it, you may have... Um, uh, uh, hopefully you got the vowel sounds right, first of all. So in this in this word we have the sounds o, a, e, i, o. Each of them cut short, nothing changing once you, as you say, each vowel sound. Again, o, watch my mouth, o, a, e, i, o. Okay? Now, secondly, uh, once you, as we put that all together, we try to put it all together, we have to know where we're going to stress. Which syllable is going to be stressed? Is it clo? Is it ra, or ran, fe, ni, or kol? There are five syllables in this, uh, this outrageous word. Um, and, and which syllable will be stressed? It's going to be the last one because it doesn't end in n, s, or a vowel sound. And there, so, uh, therefore, I will try to say chloranfenicol, chloranfenicol. Now, if you happen to know that it's pronounced chloranfenicol, for example, then the word has been spelled wrong in your intake form and it needs an accent mark. But I'm assuming that it's, it's spelled correctly, so it should be chloranfenicol. Okay. Try and say in the next. Well, the next one's an easier word to say. Even I can understand it. I'll go ahead and, and read this word. Yeah, suspension, suspension. Now, why is it susp Why did the rule said a e i o u n r s stresses on the next to last syllable? So why isn't it suspension? Because it ends in an n. Suspension. This is the other rule I need to share with you, and that is that an, an accent mark trumps the first rule. Whenever a syllable has an accent mark on it, that syllable will receive the stress. And in, ex in essence, that accent mark is showing that the rules of that rule of stress has been broken. If any of you know Spanish, you know that for some examples of that, like uh, uh, like telephone. Uh, telephone is telefono. And I didn't, I didn't stress any syllable intentionally. There are four syllables. Telefono. Okay? And then an O. Stress should be on the next to last syllable, therefore. So I should say telefono. But the fact of the matter is, how do you say it? Yeah, the word is telefono. Telefono. Tele. And since the stress is on the next to next to last syllable, I put an accent mark on that on that e, which is the letter e, uh, to show that that rule the rule of stress has been broken. Telefono. Okay. All right. Try to say this last word right here. Okay, I know how I wanted to say it. I want to put the stress on the pro because it sounds more like English. But, um, uh, but uh, I looked in Google, didn't see any X marks anywhere in this word. So I'm assuming it's spelled correctly, and, and therefore it's ibuprofeno, ibuprofeno. Okay, stress is on the fe, fe, the next to last syllable because the word ends in an o. So let me repeat the rule one more time. If a word ends in a, e, i, o, u, a vowel. Or N or S, place the stress of your voice on the next to last syllable. Otherwise, any other ending on the last syllable. But allow the accent mark to trump that rule so that your, the stress would fall where that accent mark appears. Hope that makes sense. Um, in any case, let me summarize all I've said. I've talked for a long time. Uh, first of all, if you want to pronounce well in Spanish, the most important element, for, forgetting all the rest, is... Um, uh, Maintain the purity of the vowel sound. Once you start to say a vowel sound, don't change the shape of your mouth at all. Uh, and and um, uh, cut the vowel sounds short. Don't elongate them, because that will lead you into diphthonging, changing the shape of your mouth as you say a vowel sound. Secondly, get the R out of your throat and in the front of your mouth. Um, uh, thirdly, soften the D. Soften the D sound with the, instead of a D, the, the. Get the tip of your tongue between your teeth. Um, stress the proper syllable. The rule is ends in a vowel. N or S stresses on the next to last syllable. Anything else stresses on the last syllable. Accent mark trumps all. And then the last point is always uh, give a vowel, vowel its value no matter where it appears in a word. Uh, um, the letter E or the letter E, which is pronounced E, will always be E. For example, an elephant, and we say E, la, well, forget that in English, but it's E, le, the first A, the second A, and way at the end of the word, the last A. All were pronounced in the exact same fashion. You never change the sound of a vowel in Spanish. Hope that's helpful. Thank you for your patience if you're able to stick with me this long. Adios y hasta pronto. Espero.